and one pole pitch is equal to 180 degree electrical we have a difference between the uh, degree in electrical and mechanical so in mecha normally in mechanical if you take entire circumference if you take this entire circumference the entire circum how much you have you have 360 degree but in electrical it is not like that electrical degree separate and mechanical degree separate so in usual aspect uh, we will uh, talk in terms of mechanical degree mechanical degree means one circumference one circumference is equal to a 360 degree but not with respect to electrical degree you can see here one pole pitch what is a pole pitch angular displacement between two adjacent poles you have your one pole you have your one pole what is a pole pitch now one pole pitch is equal to 180 degree electrical so it's not a mechanical 180 degree so if you talk in terms of mechanical it will be around only 90 degree but here in terms of electrical it is 180 degree electrical one pole pitch so we have people in this way you have four we have what how many poles we have here we have four poles So total electrical uh, total electrical angle uh, theta electrical is something about what P into 180. So P into 180 means how many number of poles into 180. So mechanical angle. So mechanical angle means we can mechanical angle means uh, consider entire circumference. Entire circumference how much? It is 360 degree. Okay. Now theta electrical. Theta electrical by theta mechanical. Uh, theta electrical by theta mechanical. Theta electrical how do you how, how do you find out? It based on number of poles. So P into 180. The, the distance between two adjacent poles is 180. P into 180 divided by theta mechanical. Theta mechanical is 360. So if you solve this one, what you get here? P by 2. So theta electrical is equal to P by 2 into theta mechanical. So total electrical degree theta electrical is equal to what? A 4 into 180 degree. So total theta. Is nothing but what four into twenty degree electrical is nothing but what seven twenty degree electrical. Once again, the theta electrical depends upon the number of poles. Okay, here in this solution we have uh, four poles. So four into one eighty, it comes around seven twenty degree electrical. If you talk in terms of uh, mechanical, it is only three sixty. But if if you talk in terms of electrical, it is seven twenty based on what based on the number of poles. If number of poles changes, once again the theta electrical changes. Okay, this uh, we are going to use uh, in output equation. So for that, uh, just I give an a, a brief uh, introduction here. So this is regarding uh, with respect to theta electrical and theta mechanical. Okay, you continue. Once again, I uh, once again uh, charge of uh, specific magnetic loading and specific electrical loading. So we have discussed the specific magnetic loading and specific electrical loading with respect to or with respect to sequence machine, with respect to induction uh, in, in, induction machine or induction motor. So uh, most of the things will be almost common, but a few things change with respect to the which machine you are going to select. So I am going to select. I am going to concentrate with respect to a DC machine. For a DC machine, uh, what are the factors uh, that influence for the choice of a specific magnetic loading? So with respect to DC machine, I am going to discuss. Few things will be common, but other uh, other things you, you can add for DC machine. Likewise, other things you can add for sequence machine, and, and few things can be add, add for induction induction motor. So here I am going to concentrate with respect to what with uh, respect to the DC machine. So the choice which influence uh, the factors which influence the choice of specific magnetic loadings are for the first one. Magnetic flux density in the tooth. Magnetic flux density in the tooth. The maximum flux density in the inner part of the machine is directly proportional to average flux density in the air gap. We know that uh, this is if, if, if you can see here, this is something your armature, this is something your uh, air gap, and uh, after the air gap you have your uh, field. That means you have a holes and you have a field building. So maximum flux density in the inner part of the machine is directly proportional to average flux density in the air gap. You know that average uh, flux density in the air gap uh, given the formula B A B is equal to P by into by D A. 
So average uh, flux density air gap uh, depends uh, depends mainly on what? Depends mainly on the flux produced by the fuel with respect to this uh, with respect to the distribution. This is something about armature, and this is something about your air gap. So the average flux uh, the average flux density in the air gap uh, depends upon what? Depends upon the flux produced by what? The flux produced by your field or flux produced by the pole. Okay. So, what are the factors that influence now? First one, mag uh, so magnetic flux density in the truth. Okay. Now, if you come for magnetic flux density in the truth, once again, I'll repeat, maximum flux density in the air gap part of the machine is directly proportional to average flux density in the air gap. So, what about the flux in the air gap will be directly proportional to the maximum flux density in the air part, which is something about your magnetic force. Okay. Now, if you see this figure, already everyone here, everyone, everyone knows regarding what is truth and what is slot. Already everyone knows. Once again, I'll repeat here. This is called as a slot, and this is called as a uh, tooth. And this is something but a magnetic flux in the air gap, uh, flowing from what, flowing from your magnetic poles, uh, flowing from the field uh, to the armature. You can see here uh, W S. Uh, w S stands for what? Width of the slot. Uh, then uh, W T is something but a width of the tooth, and D S. Uh, depth of the slot. Everyone knows this. And Y S is something but slot pitch. Y S is something but the uh, slot pitch, the distance between the center of one slot to and center of other slot. It's called as a slot pitch. Now, so here we are going to discuss the maximum flux density in the tooth. Uh, what should be the maximum flux, uh, density in the tooth? And everyone knows that uh, the flux in the tooth or uh, the flux in the teeth depends upon the depth of what? Depth of the slot. Uh, depth of the slots are width of the slot. Okay, the flux density, uh, the flux density in the tooth depends upon what depends upon the width of the slot. How much are going to look for width of the slot? If you remember, we discussed this in the synchronous machine. Okay, now let us see flux over one slot pitch. Flux over one slot pitch means flux over one slot pitch. This is slot pitch. Flux over one slot pitch is equal to what? P into five divided by S. Let P is number of poles, five is something but flux, and this is something and uh, S is the number of slots. So over one slot pitch, S. And we know and substitute for P5. What is P5? We know that BAB is equal to what? P5 divided by pi dn. So P5 is something but what now? BAB into pi dn divided by S. Okay. How you got this one? From the formula BAB. BAB is equal to P5 divided by pi dn. So you are, you are substituting for P5. Next, uh, BAB into pi dl by S. So you everyone knows that pi d by S. So pi d by S is something but what? A slot pitch for S. So you can write uh, BAB into YS into L. Take it as equation one, where y s is equal to what? y s is equal to slot pitch is equal to what? Pi d by s. Yes. This is what flux over one slot pitch. This is slot pitch. The flux over one slot pitch given by the expression B A B into y s into l. Next, uh, flux density in the tooth. Flux density in the tooth. Everyone knows the flux density in the tooth depends upon the depth of the slot. So, flux density in the tooth B T. Is, is equal to flux in each tooth divided by area of each tooth. So flux in each tooth. So as I told, flux in each tooth, flux in uh, flux in each tooth depends upon depends on second the uh, what uh, on second the width of the uh, width of the uh, slots. So you are taking almost the uh, same formula here width of the slot uh, almost the flux over one slot we are going to take. So B T is equal to flux in each tooth, almost equal to what? Equal to B A B Y S into L because this is the flux that produced in one slot pitch. One slot pitch means what? This off and this off it's equal to what? Equal to one slot. So flux in each tooth is something but what? B A into Y S L B A B into uh, Y S into L divided by area of each tooth. Uh, each tooth area of each tooth is something but what? Width of the tooth. Width of the tooth. And length of the what? Uh, 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 length of your uh, what you can call as uh, armature or length of your uh, your uh, distribution. If you go to this figure, I can I can show here. See nothing but what? We are width of the tooth into length. Length means nothing but what? The length of your armature. Okay. This is called as L. Nothing but your length of the armature. Oh, come back. Come back to the equation. So you can see here. So area of each tooth is nothing but Width into L, width into L. So here, what will happen? L and L cancels. Then what you get here? B A B into Y S by W T. What is that? Flex density in the tooth. B T is equal to B A B into Y S by T. That is equation two. And you can see here, in silent pole machine, silent pole machine means the transport alternator. In silent pole machine, flux is concentrated uh, concentrated over the polar, 
Hence, the teeth under the pollock will carry all of the flux and hardly any flux carried by the teeth lying outside the pollock. Means, you can see if, if this is the machine, okay, this is called as a pollock. You can see here, this is called as a pollock. This is called as a pollock. And uh, this is what? This is your armature. And you know, you know that uh, armature has got number of slots and it has got number of uh, tooth, a uh, number of teeth or number of tooth. Whichever the slots, uh, uh, whichever the uh, whichever the slots or tooth come under this polar. Can you uh, can you hear me? So whichever the whichever the slots or whichever the tooth come under polar will carry the maximum flux. It will carry the maximum flux. Whichever the slots are pole, uh, whichever slots are tooth come under the polar. Then we can see here in this region, in this region we don't have what we don't have any pole here. So slots are uh, teeth which come under this region will does not carry any flux okay with uh, with uh, does not carry any flux which of the slots which come under this pole arc will have the maximum flux so which of the slots which come under this region between this region it does not carry any flux that is the middle okay if you come back here so in silent pole machine once again i repeat the um, flux is concentrated over the polar. Hence, the teeth under that polar will carry whole of the flux and hardly any flux carried by the teeth lying outside the polar. So, whichever the teeth they come under, uh, which doesn't come under the polar, will never carry any flux. Okay, any flux. Thus, then the, the then the flux density in the teeth of excellent pole machines or any machines if you take PT is equal to what BAV by psi into ys by wt so with this equation what you what you want to take where size something but what size something but your ratio of polar to pole pitch so bav by psi into ys by wt and everyone knows that bav by psi is nothing but your bg so i, I think one, one problem with data synchronous machine regarding this uh, caps in uh, maximum flex density okay so B, bav by psi is nothing but your bg what is bg here bg is equal to maximum flex density in the air cap maximum Flexibility in the air gap. I'm not talking about BAV. BAV is something about average flexibility, but BG is for maximum flexibility in the air gap. And psi, psi is something about what? Ratio of pole arc to pole pitch. Ratio of pole arc to pole pitch means if uh, this is pole arc, this is if this is pole arc, this is psi, pole arc to pole pitch. This is your pole pitch. Psi is equal to ratio of pole arc to pole pitch. Okay, now. It is clear from the equation three, uh, equation two and three, the flex density in the teeth is directly proportional to specific magnetic loading. So we can sum up that the flex density in the teeth uh, depends upon what depends upon depends upon the specific magnetic loading. And then once again, depends upon the pole and how many terms of windings you are going to do on the poles. Okay. So from this equation, uh, uh, from this equation, B T is equal to B A V by psi into Y S by W T. From this equation, is right. Bt by BAV. Bt is something what what flex density in the teeth and BAV is something what what flex density in the air gap. Bt by BAV is equal to what? Ys. Ys divided by psi into WT. Ys into psi into WT. This is equation 4. So it is clear from equation 4 the ratio Bt by BAV is constant and therefore Bt must be selected in such a way that Bt does not exceed the maximum speed, maximum specified uh, magnetic loading that is 2 to 2.2 vapor per meter square in case of DC machine. So this ratio Bt by BAV, Bt is something but flex density in the teeth and BAV is something but flex density in the air gap. So this average should be selected such that Bt means flex, flex density in the teeth should not exceed, should not exceed what 2 to 2.2 vapor per meter square. So what is the, what is the meaning means? Uh, so, the ratio should be cited in such a way that the Bt should not exceed, Bt should not exceed 2 to 2.22 vapor per meter square. How you calculate ratio? Bt by BAV is nothing but what? Ys divided by psi into Wt. So, whatever the value if you got here, okay, if you take, it should be constant and Bt should not exceed uh, 2 to 2.22 vapor per meter square. So, finally, we are summing up that the flux density of the teeth, uh, the flux density in the teeth should not exceed 2 to 2.2 vapor per meter square should be selected in such a way that Bt by B average should be a constant. Okay. 
and for explaining these things, I've gone to what I've gone to this equation. Okay. So finally, you can say that the flex density should be 2 to 2.22 vapor per meter square. So next, uh, let us uh, come uh, come regarding what uh, some of the armature slots. Okay, you can see uh, this is a, this is called as a slot. This is slot, and this, this this you can see that this is nothing but your tooth. The parallel sided slot. See here, uh, this is nothing but this. you can see the line here. Almost both are parallel, parallel uh, parallel uh, sided slot. So small, which is not designed with the parallel sided slot with a tapered tooth. Means this is a tapered tooth. Width of tooth is not same for the height of the tooth. Means what? If you take parallel slot, definitely what will happen to tooth? Uh, it will be a tapered tooth. Means what? The flex density, uh, the flex density will not be uniform throughout uh, from the uh, bottom to the height of the tooth. Okay. Tooth flex density will vary from minimum to maximum over the uh, tooth height because if you take from the bottom to height here, uh, the width will not be same. Here it may be shorter. Uh, here it may be larger. And once again, the flex density will not be uniform from the bottom to the height of the tooth. Okay. Thus, low value of specific magnetic loading is selected for small machine to compensate the flex variation. So, nothing but what for a low uh, for a low value uh, for small machines, we have to go for what a low value of specific magnetic loading. Okay. Uh, when higher value of average flex density is selected, a main frequent for iron part of the machine will be high, uh, which further results in a large and pattern speed copper loss and cost of copper. Uh, it's nothing important regarding this sentence. Uh, here, uh, if you take a parallel slot, then there will be uh, the width, uh, then the uh, width of the teeth will not be uniform throughout from bottom to the height of the teeth, and the flex varies from bottom to height. It will not be uniform. This is regarding what? Uh, this is regarding the uh, maximum, what you can say, uh, magnetic, uh, magnetic flex density in the tooth. Magnetic flex density in the tooth. See that a magnetic flex density in the tooth should be selected within 2 to 2.22 weber per, per meter square. Okay. Such that the condition Bt by Bm should be a, a constant. That is regarding the magnetic flex density in the tooth. What is the second factor? What is the second factor which influences the selection of uh, uh, specific uh, magnetic loadings? Okay. Next second factor is what? Frequency. When the machine rotates, the armature core and the teeth, the armature core and teeth comes under the influence of north and south pole alternatively. This reversal, uh, this reversal of frequency at the armature will yield hysteresis and eddy current loss. What the meaning exactly means? Suppose if this is the DC machine and we have this armature. So armature what? Armature consists of your slots and your tooth. So this is what? This is your pole. One is the north pole, south pole. Okay, south pole, one second, north pole, south pole. Which is, each, uh, you have your two north pole and you have two south pole. So what will happen when armature rotates, it uh, it what? It alternately comes under the uh, south pole and it, it alternately comes under the north pole. In that case, what will happen? Uh, there will be what? There, there will be the reverse of, uh, reverse of frequency. Everyone knows that in the armature, uh, the current will be AC. Whatever the current or voltage will be AC. And there will be what? A reversal of frequency. Means when it comes under uh, south pole, and on the uh, same armature side which comes on a north pole, there is a reversal of uh, uh, reversal of frequency, or what you can say there is there's a reversal of magnetic lines. If this continues, if this continues uh, continuously, if armature rotates, then what will happen? There's a possibility of what? There's a possibility of anti uh, current loss and even the hysteresis loss. Okay. This reversal of frequency at armature will yield hysteresis loss and anti current loss in it. Okay. Frequency of reversal given by F is equal to NP by 2. Everyone knows what is NN is equal to 120 by P. Then if you solve for N, N is nothing but in RPM, convert into RPS, that is nothing but N by 60. Then when you solve for F, what you get? F is equal to NP by 2. Okay, that is frequency of reversal. Also, uh, power loss due to hysteresis. Hysteresis power loss is proportional to F into BAV. If it's nothing but frequency, BAV is nothing but average frequency. And eddy current loss, eddy current power loss is proportional to F square into BAV square. Okay. To keep the total armature hysteresis and eddy current loss within the limit, DC machine with high frequency, uh, high, uh, high frequency of reversal should not be designed for a large value of specific magnetic loading. So, uh, to keep within, uh, to keep this hysteresis loss and eddy current loss within uh, within the uh, limit, the DC machine with high frequency uh, frequency of reversal. Uh, should not be designed. Means high frequency of reversal means what? If there are more number of poles, then definitely we have more. Then we have more number of frequency of reversal. See that uh, you keep the poles within the limit. 
uh, for this uh, not designed for large value of uh, specific magnetic fluid. Okay, should not be designed for a large value of specific magnetic fluid. Frequency of uh, then to keep the armature interstices and thicker glass within the limit, DC machine with high frequency of should not be designed for large value of uh, specific magnetic loading. So for if we select for a, a specific a large value of specific magnetic loading, and uh, definitely. Uh, you should not go for uh, more frequency of reversal. More frequency of reversal means if the number of poles is more, you will get more frequency of reversal. So see that uh, if you want to so select for large uh, specific magnetic loading, uh, see uh, see that the number of poles will be minimum. Okay. So we can sum up that uh, due to this frequency of reversal, there will be what? There will be eddy current loss and there will be a hysteresis loss. And you have to overcome this eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. Uh, see that uh, the number of poles. Going, uh, going to select that uh, depends once again uh, with the rating of the machine. Next term, third factor. Third factor is what size of the machine. Large machine has huge diameter, hence large tooth width. So if a machine is large, once again the tooth uh, tooth width will be large. Increased tooth width permits high value of uh, gap plug density without causing saturation. Okay. The usual value of uh, means uh, gap flux density means usual value of uh, your uh, gap flux density will be what 0.55 to 1.15 per per meter square pg and average gap density BA is equal to what uh, 0.4 to 0.8 per per meter square. This is the thing what once it depends upon large function. If you go for large function, definitely the width of uh, tooth will be large and this permits what higher value of uh, maximum gap density and also the higher value of uh, average gap density for, for the large machine. Okay, for a large machine, if you take this is the BG value it means maximum gap, uh, maximum uh, uh, maximum flux gap density, and uh, average uh, average flux gap density BAV is nothing but 0.4 to 0.8 per per meter square. This is regarding what the factors that influence the specific magnetic loading. Likewise, we have a few things: the choice of a specific electrical loading, the factors which influence the choice of a specific electrical loading. Okay, what are the factors that it influence for choice of a specific electrical loading? First, what first factor is for temperature. Let us come for temperature. The value of specific electrical loading is governed by allowable temperature rise of the machine. An armature of a rotating machine is shown the figure below. I show the figure below for this machine. So everyone knows uh, the temperature rise uh, indirectly depends upon the number of uh, conductors you are going to accommodate in the slots. If more number of conductors in the slots, definitely the temperature rise, uh, uh, temperature of the machine increases. Okay, if you take this one, if you, if you see this figure, uh, this is something but what your armature, armature of a DC machine where you got a slot, where you got tooth. Okay, so if you go for more number of slots, uh, more number of conductors in the slot, definitely the temperature will increase. So, how much uh, number of slots? Uh, if you want to take and how many conductors you have to place in this slot, you have to decide uh, to keep the machine within the permissible temperature. Okay, for this machine, let us ZA. ZA is something but what total number of armature conductors. This is ZA means uh, everyone knows total number of armature conductors. Okay, armature conductor placed in the slot. S is equal to number of slots. AZ, area of each conductor, rho resistivity of the conductor material. If you use copper, what is the resistivity of the copper material? And delta is something but your current density. Everyone knows. Next, specific electrical loading. Everyone knows the formula. Specific electrical loading case is known as nothing but what? Iz into Z divided by Pd. What is Iz? Iz is nothing but what? Current. Current in the shutter conductor. Iz into Z divided by Pd. So, it, everyone knows this formula. It's nothing but specific electrical loading formula. So, with this formula, what I'll do, uh, divide uh, both numerator and denominator by S. Iz by Z divided by S and Pd by S. Then, what do you have to Z A by S, Z A is something but what? Armature conductors, uh, total number of armature conductor, this is something but what? Number of slots. So, uh, this Z A by Z, Z A by S can replace, replace by what? Z S, what is Z S now? Number of conductor per slot. Okay, number of conductor per slot, Z A by S is something but what? Z S, which is something but number of conductor per slot. Z A by S is replaced by Z S, and by D by S, you know, is nothing but your slot pitch by S. Okay? Next, that is what specific electrical loading. IES, ZS divided by OES. Next, the ratios of, uh, ratios of uh, slot portion of each conductor. It's nothing but uh, the conductor placed in the slot is what is this resistance? Everyone knows rho L by A, rho L by AZ. 
and uh, high square loss in the slot portion of each conductor so high square law loss iz square uh, rho, uh, rho l into az okay next high square or loss in the slot portion of each uh, in the slot portion of each conductor okay this is high square loss in the slot portion of each conductor high square or loss uh, in the slot uh, in this i think uh, i got uh, two things here uh, this is nothing but i square or loss in each conductor and uh, this is nothing but i square or loss uh, this i think i'll change this one i square or loss in each conductor okay i square uh, i z square into rho l by a this is i square or loss i square or loss in slot portion of each conductor means in slot there will be a several conductor this is nothing but what z is into i z square rho l divided by a here we just uh, cancel this uh, slot uh, slot portion i square or loss of each conductor okay i square or loss in the slot portion of each conductor means in a slot there will be several conductors so for each conductor z is into i z square rho l by a z okay now heat produced in the slot is dissipated over surface uh, over surface over one slot page so whatever the heat uh, produced in the slot this is a slot suppose this is a slot in the slot there may be several conductor okay so heat produced in the slot it dissipated over entire what over entire this slot pitch it dissipated in the slot may be dissipated over entire slot pitch that is in mean over entire slot pitch okay it produced in the slot it dissipated over the surf, over surf, uh, over the surface over uh, one slot pitch so heat dissipate heat dissipation of heat dissipation surface of the slot is something but what ys into l so this is ys and this is nothing but what length length of your armature os into l okay this is os into uh, os into l loss dissipated per unit area of armature conductor loss dissipated per unit area of armature conductor q is equal to loss per surface what is loss here this is a loss this is loss surface what is surface this is surface os into l so what you got here z is iz square rho l divided by az into os into l just i am rearranging this term okay is into z s into y s into i z into y z into rho means i am rearranging re i am splitting this i z okay i z into z s by y s nothing but what nothing but your a c okay nothing but your a c a c is nothing but what here you can see here. nothing but your a c ampere conductor i z by a z uh, so current by area means nothing but your current density okay i z by a uh, a z is nothing but your current density and this is nothing but your rho this is equation one so therefore other things being equal heat dissipated per unit area of the armature surface is proportional to the specific kinetic loading so whatever the heat dissipated in a per unit area of the armature surface whatever the heat dissipated per unit area of the armature surface is proportional to the specific kinetic loading so temperature theta whatever heat dissipated temperature rise theta is what is equal to that proportional to uh, specific kinetic specific kinetic loading Nothing but your Q into C. What is C? Here? C is something but your cooling coefficient. So theta is equal to Q into C. Substitute for Q. What is Q here? AC delta rho into C. C is something but your cooling coefficient. Next, specific electrical loading AC. The specific electrical load AC is something but what? Theta by uh, theta by delta rho C. Theta by delta rho C. C is, C is something but cooling coefficient. Rho is something but resistivity, and delta is something but current density. So if you see this equation two, specific electrical loading AC is equal to what? AC is equal to theta. So what we can sum up means for a particular temperature, you are going to use a specified uh, specified uh, value of electrical loading. So from equation two, it is clear that electrical loading AC is fixed by allowable temperature rise. So if you, for example, if you take theta is equal to 100 degree, then for 100 degree, what you have to use specific electrical loading? It will be fixed. So because AC is directly proportional to theta, so based on the particular temperature, you have to select what you have to select the uh, what ampere conductor value, whether it is 50, whether it is 20,000 or whether it is 15,000 or whether it is 25,000, based on the temperature. To show this uh, expression, so what I am showing here to to derive uh, to show this expression, I what I have derived this from. How I got that expression? Based on this expression, you can say that uh, for a particular temperature rise. i can select what i can select the particular value of ac okay that is the meaning okay now 
higher value of physical take loading can be selected where higher temperature is is allowed if you go for higher value of uh, higher value of ac then definitely what will happen the temperature will increase that is machine with insulation that, that can withstand higher temperature rise it also depends on the type of insulation and cooling techniques employed so you, you know that uh, for higher uh, for, for higher rating machine definitely what will happen you go for higher value of ac and for higher rating machine definitely there there will be what there will be a better cooling technique and also uh, and there will be what there will be a better insulation in the slots and if you remember i have told that for higher rating machine 60% of the slot area is used for insulation only 40% is used for your conductor okay uh, this is what uh, the first factor nothing but temperature so you can sum up that for a particular temperature a particular value of ac should be selected based on the temperature rise a particular value of ac should be selected uh, to say this uh, uh, sentence what i have taken i have, I have proved what i have, i have proved this uh, i have taken this equation and i have proved it okay next what is the second factor the second factor is what speed of the machine speed of the machine for high speed machine a higher value of ac can be selected because ventilation is better which is which will dissipate heat at faster rate higher permissible temperature is definitely if you go for higher rating of machine definitely the speed of the machine will be higher and uh, if uh, higher rating machine definitely the ventilation will be better uh, and uh, dissipation of heat will be and dissipation of heat, uh, heat will be in faster rate in high speed machine okay this is one third uh, factor voltage in high voltage machine larger space is required for insulation for insula uh, uh, required for insulation and therefore less space for conductor this i told earlier okay larger space for insulation around 60% and 40% uh, for only for the conductors this means that in high voltage machine the space left for conductor is less and therefore we should uh, use small value of ampere uh, ampere conductor per meter so uh, for higher rating machine space left for uh, conductor is less uh, less means only around 40% so you have to use what a small value of ampere conductors means Uh, don't go for 30000 ampere conductor or 40000 ampere conductor go for like 10000 ampere conductors or 15000 ampere conductors that is the meaning of voltage okay so you can say that uh, based on the rating of the voltage of the machine you're going to select you're going to select the uh, value of ampere conductors for example for high rating machine you're going to select a, a small value of, small value of ac likewise if you go for a small uh, small uh, small rating of machine you will go for large value of ac that is regarding voltage next uh, size of the uh, size of the machine in uh, in a large size machine more space is available for accommodation of conductor in a slot which permits to select higher ac okay that is one size of the machine based on size of the machine you are going to select what you are going to select the ac next uh, next one armature reaction when high value of ac is selected higher value of armature mmf makes Uh, armature magnetically very strong so under loaded condition large air gap flux distortion we can see main flux okay now see here everyone knows uh, uh, what do you, what do you mean by armature reaction is nothing but what uh, uh, due to the armature flux which dist uh, which uh, distorts the main flux so main flux is nothing but what the flux produced by your free winding that has a pass through the air gap and comes on the armature so the armature reaction is what if you go for uh, when higher value of ac is selected the armature mmf you know that armature mmf i told earlier what what do you mean by mmf it is responsible for what uh, generation and the flow of flux so higher value of armature uh, mmf makes uh, armature magnetically very strong so under load condition the large area flux distortion we can see main flux uh, due to this armature flux what will happen it will distort the main flux so to overcome uh, to overcome uh, this problem what i have to do Uh, to reduce uh, this armature reaction means nothing but armature reaction which distorts the main flux so what you have to do you have to make your field uh, field flux strong so if you, if you want to make the field of flux strong what you have to do field mmf needs to be very strong so it will be achieved by adding more number of conductors if, if i want to make a field flux or main flux strong i want to go on second go for more number of turns on the holes so by adding more field conductor this means that increase cost of conductor and large size of the machine so what will happen indirectly the cost will be increased uh, for the large size of the machine so uh, so uh, you can sum up here uh, for armature uh, to overcome this armature reaction then definitely what you have to do you have to go for a, a more winding on the field uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, 
we, we can we, we can or we can negotiate negotiate this or not the action. Uh, when this will happen, when you select the higher value of AC, higher value of AC, if you select this uh, problem uh, exists and overcome this problem, once again you have to add more number of turns on the free winding so that uh, my main flux will be strong and it is not distorted by the armature uh, flux. Okay. Next, uh, last uh, last uh, factor, commutation. Uh, commutation, uh, everyone knows that what is the job of a commutator, so it will convert what? It will convert AC into DC. Okay, so machine designed with high value of AC as large armature conductor and it will result in a large number of coil, more number of uh, turns and large coil inductance. Okay, this is uh, as usual uh, based on the diameter of the machine and definitely the conductor also increases. Hence, high reactance voltage in coil delays the commutation and creates the worst commutation conditions. So, what will happen? Uh, due to this high re uh, reactance voltage, if you have more number of turns, if something was similar to inductance, if I is found in a form of a, uh, means if you found in this lot, similar to inductance. If you have high reactance voltage, what will happen? It will uh, delay the commutation. Means, uh, what is commutation? Means uh, converting AC into DC. Huh? So, the process of commutation will be delayed and it, and it, will, become, uh, it will become worse. Means, and the output of uh, your uh, commutator segment will be DC. The, uh, that uh, cannot be happen if you go for what? If you go for a, a large value of AC. So what I have to do to have a better commutation or uh, to a better commutation, what, uh, what should be value of uh, specific electrical loading? The usual value of specific electrical loading is what? 50,000 to uh, 50,000 ampere turns per meter for machine using glass insulation. Once again, that depends upon the, what type, which type of insulation you're going to use, okay? So, uh, you have to select uh, AC in such a way that uh, uh, th there will not be any trouble in a commutation process. Means what? Converting AC into a uh, DC. And these are all what? These are all the factors, around six factors, which influence uh, for the selection what? For the selection of uh, your, uh, for the selection of uh, the specific electrical load. Okay? Uh, they may ask uh, with respect to DC machine, uh, discuss regarding the specific electrical loading and specific magnetic loading. So, understand. How much if you want to, what, I, I, here I give in detail, you understand these things and uh, some of the points if you want, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, neglect, see that uh, if you, if you write everything is uh, well and good, otherwise you understand and uh, be a little bit uh, brief, okay. This is regarding what, uh, the choice that influences the uh, selection of uh, specific magnetic loadings and specific electrical loadings. Let us come to the advantages of advantages of higher specific magnetic loading and electrical loading. They may ask in a few question paper, they have asked uh, what are the advantages of higher specific advantages and disadvantages of higher specific magnetic loading and electrical loading. Advantages of higher uh, specific magnetic loading and electrical loading means what is the advantage? Size and volume of the machine is reduced. Okay. Uh, here, uh, here, if you take in combination, so finally what you can say is that volume of machines is reduced. If you take with respect to electrical loading, if you go for higher value of AC, then definitely the machine volume will be increased. But if you take joint, if you take higher specific magnetic and electrical loading, then size and volume of the machine is reduced, weight of the machine is reduced, overall cost of the machine is reduced. So if you see these three points, a more a more uh, a important importance, uh, more importance is given with respect to higher higher uh, magnetic loading. Okay, less importance is given to electrical loading. But in combination of both, if you take advantage, this is the, these are the advantages. What are disadvantages of higher uh, specific electrical loading? Armature copper losses increase. Uh, disadvantages of higher uh, specific electrical loading. Definitely, if you go for uh, higher uh, uh, AC, armature copper losses increase, competition become inferior. If you go for higher value of AC, definitely the competition process will disturb. Competition reactance voltage is increased, field copper loss increase due to higher excitation current, overall temperature is increased. These are all the things uh, uh, will happen if you go for high value of AC. Likewise, if you have higher value of magnet, uh, higher value of uh, okay, higher, uh, higher value of magnetic, uh, uh, cancel this electrical, uh, this around the higher magnetic loading, okay, this, uh, this cancel this electrical, okay. Iron loss increase, field copper loss increases, higher magnitude of no load uh, current increases, okay, tooth flux density increases, noise in the machine increases, possibility of magnetic saturation in iron parts increases. Definitely, what will happen? Uh, if you go for more BAV, definitely the saturation of your uh, uh, saturation of your armature pore takes place. Okay, 
And these are what dis uh, disadvantages of higher magnetic loading, electrically adjusted cancer disease. Okay, these are uh, some of the theory aspects uh, regarding what uh, the factors uh, that influence uh, that influence the selection of what selection or a choice of specific electrical loading and a specific magnetic loading.